Hello, this is Kenny Shea speaking. Uh, in this section, we're going to talk about the uh, different kind the application of fuel cells. Since the fuel cell has a different different kind, there's many kind of fuel cell has been developed, and uh, depends on their characteristic and performance operating range. Uh, they may they've been used for different kind of applications. The application of fuel cell can be divided into five categories. The power for space vehicle, power for military application, stational power, mobile power, and portable power. Actually, um, the power for space application is the first practical application for fuel cell. Because the rocket propellant used for the space vehicle are hydrogen and oxygen. And these are the fuel for the fuel cell. So the fuel cell um, convert those uh, hydrogen and oxygen chemical energy into electricity, heat, and then the final product is water. So it's not only provide the electricity for the space vehicle uh, application, but also provide the heat to keep it warm for the space vehicle, and then maybe hopefully the drinkable water for astronaut. They've been very clean without any pollution. And the secondary uh, would be the power for military application. Um, because the fuel cell is close to like a battery, it's relatively very quiet. The only noise may be come out from the blower the, because the air had to uh, compress and feed into the fuel cell. That's only the noise come from. The rest is just like a common battery. It's very quiet. And also, depends on the fuel cell type, uh, the low thermal em emission. So the infrared image kind of hard to detect. And uh, also, there's a high energy density because the fuel, they can store much higher uh, energy. So the total system might be smaller than the conventional battery for long-term uh, applications. Um, for the stational application, uh, basically it can be divided into the combined heat and power, or distribute power plant, or backup auxiliary power. For the heat and power, combined heat and power uh, application, the natural gas or the methanol was fed into the fuel cell power unit, it will convert into the electricity and also the waste heat can be used for hot water and the house heating. For the distributed power plant, you may think uh, over here there's uh, maybe a power plant that uh, generate electricity and send through the electricity through the power grid into different uh, application location, different areas. But for a certain area, for instance, maybe uh, sometimes they might need additional uh, power. In that case, the fuel cell can be uh, generate the additional power need for the for the local area. Instead of additional uh, energy had to f uh, feed through the uh, grid and to through a long distance. So this one will be. Uh, reduce the uh, transmission and distribution facility upgrade and um, variation on the power plant. The other is uh, might be for the remote site where, the no, where there's no grid connected. In this case, the power may be generated from photovoltaic or the wind power. In that case, the fuel cell can be compensated the variation on the uh, or the unstable power generated from the renewable energy. Uh, for the combined heat power, uh, the power rate is about one kilowatt per family. Uh, most uh, will be uh, being used in Japan, and uh, the family the electricity actually need is uh, somehow below uh, one kilowatt. 
for the dispute power, it depends on the location. It might be from a kilowatt to megawatt uh, uh, power rate. And for the backup power, it's also from a kilowatt to megawatt uh, power. Uh, usually the solid oxide fuel cell right now is in the megawatt range. But for the pen fuel cell, somewhere around the uh, tens kilowatt to hundreds kilowatt range. For the combined heat and power, the natural gas or the methanol was fed into the reformer. In a reformer, it will convert into the hydrogen-rich gas, such as hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This hydrogen-rich gas is fed into the fuel cell and will convert into the DC power, and then waste heat can be stored into the water tank. The DC power was converted into AC power uh, by a power conversion devices. The hot water, the low uh, temperature uh, waste heat produced from the fuel cell power can be stored in the hot water. And then reformer may be also released some uh, uh, high temperature uh, waste heat will be also stored in the hot water tank. Those uh, thermal energy can be used for hot water and house heating. The Heat re reuse efficiency is about 50 to 55 percent, and then the electricity generated from the fuel cell is about 35 percent. So the total energy conversion efficiency is somewhere around 85 to 90 percent, which is very um, good for uh, this kind of application. And uh, also, there's a possible for the mobile power. Uh, Mobile power, uh, they've been developed for the electric vehicle, yachts, motorcycles, scooter, bike, and so on, and also the wheelchair and the forklift. Uh, so far, right now, the most popular will be on the electric vehicle and the forklift. Motorcycle also had uh, some regional development. Uh, for the electric vehicle uh, or the yachts, the power rate is somewhere around the uh, Tens, maybe say 50 kilowatt to uh, 300 kilowatt, depends on the size of the electric vehicle or the yacht. The motorcycle somewhere around the tens kilowatt to uh, 50 kilowatt, most would be. And the, the wheelchair somewhere around the tens kilowatt, and the forklift is also somewhere around the tens kilowatt range, depends on the size of the, the forklift. Um, for the electric vehicle, there's a three different type of electric vehicle. The first is a pure electric vehicle EV, and the second is a hybrid, the battery and the internal combustion engine ICE. And then the third hybrid is a battery and a fuel cell hybrid the electric vehicle. For the electric vehicle, most uh, uh, example is a Tesla Model X. The, the leasing battery pack will be released electricity to the motor and then motor will be convert electricity into the mechanical energy and then drive the, the vehicle. The one advantage for the electric vehicle is uh, uh, it don't need the shift box, the gearbox, because the, the characteristic of the motor, uh, it will be up running at a different routine speed with the same torque, so you don't need the gearbox to transfer from first shift to second shift and third shift uh, at a different uh, speed. Uh, one motor will be uh, do all the jobs. And uh, the hybrid hybrid uh, vehicle, the first hybrid actually has become commercialized is the hybrid uh, between the battery and internal combustion engine. The typical example is that Toyota's Prius. The it com there's a two power system. One mainly mainly is a gasoline. They'll be released the gasoline feed into the engine. Actually, you may think it is a the final chemical energy and com convert into the mechanical energy through the engine. And will be of course the burning of gasoline will release the carbon dioxide. And also the battery will re, uh, will release the electricity, give it into the motor, and it will convert into the mechanical energy. Drive the vehicle. 
but during the um, acceleration, uh, need the additional um, energy uh, from the the vehicle, then the battery will be released and uh, give additional uh, mechanical energy to speed up the vehicle. But during the deacceleration, uh, actually the electric mechanical energy will be come uh, through the uh, gener power generator and then charge back to the vehicle, uh, the battery. Or during the idle, the stops when you stop and the engine is still running, the engine can be uh, release the mechanical energy give to the generator and then charge the battery. So in this case, uh, in this kind of operation mode, uh, the gas mileage is much higher than the conventional uh, gasoline only powered vehicle. The, third, uh, the other hybrid vehicle is a battery and a fuel cell. A typical uh, example is a Toyota Mirai. Uh, in, this one, uh, in this case, uh, the engine will be the engine will be released, uh, replaced by the uh, fuel cell and the hydrogen, and the hydrogen uh, stored at uh, uh, some uh, somewhere around 350 pas uh, bar to 700 bar uh, the pressure, and uh, it will be uh, released, feed into the fuel cell stack power unit, and will be generate electricity, and then give to the motor and drive. Uh, the vehicle. The only produced uh, exhaust will be the water instead of the carbon dioxide like an uh, internal combustion engine. And then the fuel cell also, also can be charged for the battery. During the startup, the, the battery might be drive uh, through the motor to drive the vehicle and also initiate the, the, the fuel cell because at the beginning the the air pump or the air blower need electricity uh, from the fuel, the from the battery. When it, the fuse start, it will be like a power generator, and uh, produce the electricity uh, to the vehicle, but also can charge back to the battery. For the portable power uh, application, would be the notebook or the cell phone. Uh, in this case, uh, it, still most, in most cases, it's use a hybrid uh, uh, power, power unit uh, between the leasing ion battery and the fuel cell stick. In this case, most, for portable application, most uh, cases will be used at direct maximum fuel cell, DMFC. The reason for the uh, direct maximum fuel cell is uh, the fuel is uh, used uh, for the DMFC is a methanol. The methanol is a liquid form in a, uh, at the ambient pressure and the room temperature. It's much easy to carry and safe to carry. And the energy density is very high. So uh, that's why they use a uh, direct maximum fuel cell. The drawback is uh, the power rate, the power generate produced from the DMFC is much lower. So during the uh, startup shutdown or the, uh, the peak power demand uh, usually is supplied by the lithium ion battery. During the startup, the lithium battery will be uh, uh, delivered the electricity for the electronics. But uh, as soon as the, the DMFC start up, then it will be uh, produced, the uh, main power, steady power will be um, delivered, supplied by the DMSC, but also it might be charged the leasing battery. But uh, during the peak power, uh, leasing battery also had to be released, uh, the electricity to supply. Uh, DMSC may be just acting as a base load. So uh, the application of the fuel cell uh, can be uh, divide into five categories, and um, most for the commercial application is for stationary power, mobile power, and portable power. For the stationary power, the rating uh, for the fuel cell might be any any place from the kilowatt to megawatt. 
for the pow portable power maybe from a kilowatt to hundreds kilowatt such like a electric bus maybe rating maybe to 200 kilowatt to 300 kilowatt but for the scooter bike it might be around a kilowatt range for the portable power is somewhere below the uh, somewhere around the one watt to a uh, hundred watt m maximum so this one just to summarize uh, for the application of fuel cells then the next uh, section will talk about the uh, fuel uh, type of fuel cell or classification of fuel cells